It's been a while since I uploaded a video, mainly because I was busy with work. This video starts as most of my videos with a box that I open. Like always, a sort of metal enclosure appears. But in this case, it doesn't hold a computer. No, this beautiful beast is a Sony Umatic player, model VP5030. Believe it or not, but I got this machine from the Dutch version of eBay for only 10 bucks. The shipping was more. Since I had no tapes, I opened the top and with the help of a wooden stick I tricked the mechanism into starting. It seems to work fine, what a lovely machine. My search for blank tapes to show off the machine went quite well, since a day or three later my first blank pneumatic tape showed up. I was not quite impressed by the blend cases, but I guess that's the professional market for you. Before we start recording, let's take a quick, badly researched peek at the history of this format. Umatic format was released in September of 1971, although Sony, its producer, showed off some prototypes earlier at conferences. The format originally was intended for the home market, but filled that because of the bulky size of the players, which most of the times dwarfed the televisions they accompanied. Umatic did get a more popular use in the professional market with machines like this. Also, in professional use, their size didn't quite matter, since most of the time they would spend in rack mounts like you can see here. Some basic Umatic system data tells us that the head spins 1500 times a minute and is 11 cm wide. Also, the tape speed in PAL is 9.53 cm a second, whereon, for instance, with VHS it is 2.339 cm a second. Into more details I won't go because I'm a bit of a technical amateur. A large amount of variations of tapes were produced, as you can see on this image. Those labels look very nice. All this lovely info I got mainly from the website umaticpalsite.com. If you need more info about PAL Umatic players, tapes or other things, I would suggest you going over to them. Okay, back to where we were. So I went over to my machine and popped them into the player. I wonder if you already feel where I'm going wrong here. Yep, this is a player, not a recorder. I assumed it could also record because of the ginormous size, so off I went to eBay looking for some tapes with content on them, since buying an even bigger recorder seems a bit overkill at this moment. So as you can see most tapes are quite expensive, like this $120 Berlin something tape and some $60 promo tapes, or this $250 Bob Marley tape. But then on a lucky day on the Dutch version of eBay, I found a seller selling pneumatic tapes with recordings on them. So I connected with the seller and got 10 tapes for a good price, with some recordings on them. They arrived very quickly. This is also the first video I shot with my new Sony ZV-1. They appear to be all sort of different brand tapes, not only Sony. And then I spotted something very interesting. Look at the label on this one. Yes. It says Apple Computers Module A, D, D, 1 till 4. Very interesting. This is the tape I'm most excited for. It's always a bit scary, I find, what you will find on these tapes. This material, I think, comes from a small company that did video production or editing. Nice. The tape is matching the label. Would have been so sad if it was a different tape. Other tapes in the box are these Kodak Eastman tapes, which are in the smaller form factor. So I fired up my player and put in the tape. And not long after, I found myself watching a stranger's wedding video, in black and white. Of course, I really want to play this Apple tape. Let's see what's on that, but I'm a bit hesitant. I'm first checking that it doesn't need any tapes, and it's going quite successfully now. So. The player is functioning fine, thank god. No belts I need to replace. So now that I know the player is functioning and doesn't eat my tapes, I have enough courage to put in my special Apple tape. So let's put it in. I press rewind and this happened. As you can imagine, I almost got a heart attack because I thought my tape was being destroyed. But turns out that pneumatic players play in a different direction than I'm used to. 
At first I got this image, which almost made me think the tape contained data, which would be weird. And then after changing almost all switches, I got this, and boy was I happy. Ooh. I can see an Apple logo. Yes, Apple. indeed did I see this an Apple logo. This is of course logo. not... Hello, I'm David Cram, manager of service training. That was the first time I heard David Cram talk. By the way, off on a tangent, this television I got from a thrift store. At first it didn't work and I thought it would be just a nice piece to look at. But I could hear something loose inside. So I opened the case and discovered a large transformer loose, which I reconnected with my soldering iron. Back to the Apple tapes. I connected my laptop to the player using my AV to USB thingy, which is okay but not great, and put a VCR in the middle, which turns out I did not need. So let's see what is recorded. I'm David Cram, manager of service training. The Apple itself is easy to service. The only things that you'll have to worry about are changing the motherboard. This is module A, the first of five videos on the tape. Module A you can find on my channel. The other tapes turned out to be mainly footage of gymnastics tournaments, but I reached out to the seller and asked him if he had more Apple tapes. And luck had it, he did. So after a couple of weeks he shipped out the second batch of Apple tapes. And the seller kept his promise, a box full of pneumatic tapes with on the labels a lot of Apple. And the tapes seemed to match the boxes, although I fear the content won't be on them, because on for instance this Apple Lisa Flash tape seems to be written different things than the label on the box. Also there was this tape which on the box in Dutch stated that it was a bad tape containing some Ford footage. That tape indeed was bad. I put the tape with this Apple the personal computer on it into the player. It turned out it also contained some gymnastic footage. I had to open the case because the tape got stuck also. I moved on with the next episode. Which kept failing to play every time the head would stop spinning and the tape at once was hanging out from the shell. But then, after trying one last time, it played. And there was some footage of a service video for this printer. Like the this full one. contents I will upload to my channel screen. next week. And when it's already uploaded, the card will appear on the top screen. And now the last of the four screws that hold the uh, base onto the printer assembly itself. On the next tape, again some gymnastics. A big disappointment every time. But then, after some time, this commercial appears in bad quality, probably because of being overwritten. Some of my texts could use some editing. You can edit right here on the screen. You can add words like this, or you can remove words like that, or you can move whole paragraphs around to anywhere you want. Another tape with a very interesting label got stuck multiple times, and it didn't want to play. I took it out of its shell and cleaned the tape some, but then discovered why it wouldn't play. Some oil or other sticky residue has gotten into the case and stuck together the two halves, making it not possible for it to move. I tried a lot of things to clear it up without results. I also spent a couple of hours trying to move the tape into a different shell without results sadly. I'll keep the tape for a future attempt to look at the contents, but for now we leave it here. So the end result of this $10 player is backing up some awesome Apple tapes, which you can all find on my channel. And now also having a giant doorstop, accompanied by nearly 20 big tapes with hours of gymnastics footage. Thanks for watching and until next time.